first of all, I got a call. I missed the call because I don't answer. Do you answer numbers that you don't know? I just don't. No. No. So I didn't answer this number, right, Juliet? It's not a thing. No. So I let it go to voicemail, and I'm like, if it's important, they'll leave a voicemail. So um, there was no voicemail, but there was a text. And the text said, it's Tyler Perry here. I'm trying to reach you. But rewind. My boyfriend was like, you need to check your phone. And that's when that call I had missed. And I'm like, oh, yeah, I missed this 404 number. I don't know. And then the text came and it's like, it's Tyler Perry here. I'm trying to reach you. I think I probably, it was like one of those moments where I'm juggling or, or you know, when you like juggling balls, mm -hmm. I didn't have any balls, but my phone felt like I had the slipperiest hands because I couldn't, <laughs> I'm trying to call him back. I got to call him back. I just missed a call. You know, I've literally run around my apartment. So then I called and sat down and he just started talking. He was like, Hey, yeah, I'm about to start my vacation, but I want to let you know I've been wanting to work with you for some time. Um, I, I know you're cast as Denise in my show, but I have this other role. And I'm just like, sounds like Tyler Perry. This is Tyler this, this is Tyler Perry. Oh, my gosh. And, you know, just listening. And then there was a break for me to interject. And I said, first of all, hi, Tyler Perry. And then I was like, second of all, yes. I already know about Ruth's character. I've read, obviously, my scripts uh, for the Oval, so I saw where she comes in uh, to play, and she looks interesting. It, it, it seems interesting, this cult story that you have within the, the White House uh, soap opera that you have. So I would love to explore. And he was like, okay, well, just don't tell me right now. You know, think about it. And I said, okay, I'll pray about it. And the next day, I told him, yes. I want to do this role. You know, he's a giant man and he's done some really incredible things. And so most people would be intimidated, but he, um, if you, if you do take the opportunity to speak to him, some people are intimidated, but I'll say for my very first encounter, I was just like, I have to tell him thank you. So I've always like talked to him, but um, if you take that opportunity, I feel like you'll discover he has such a big heart and he cares about not only our shows, but he cares about people as individuals. And he fights for the underdog. That's his thing. I'm grateful that he is always looking for talent, not always in the forefront. Like he looks for talent that may be on their grind and have been waiting for the opportunity. And that was something that happened to me in my case. What is Ruth like? Ruth is a woman who is driven, um, a woman who is in a situation that I feel like most people can relate to. There are relatable situations where I feel like Ruth um, really speaks to that inner person in people where they can say subconsciously, I've got to check some things in my heart, you know, and, and understand if I'm really moving off of my gut or if I'm moving off of what other people or what a person or a thing is telling me to do. And so that's what I appreciate about her character is it's like a self check um, in, in your own life, an assessment is if you will, to where you can say like, if I, am I too devoted to this thing or to this person to where now my own judgment is clouded? Um, I think Ruth is a very, the, the way the story is, is unfolding is showing that, you know, some people have to go through things to actually learn the lesson. She has been misled by the highest in, in her case, but a lot of people are misled by people in life. Mm -hmm. So the, re the relatability in that for me um, and the empathy in that for me was just like, oh, this is not just a, a, a religious or, you know, sex cult topic. This is a worldly topic because if you look up the definition of a cult, it's not it doesn't have anything to do with religion or sex it's about an, or excuse me um it's about the admiration of a thing or a person that's when it becomes cult like you know so it could be a basketball player celebrity it could be uh your favorite news channel you know where you could take everything that they say as as bible and say like that's how i'm gonna live my life you know yeah. so I, I just think that there's deeper lessons in my show that if people take the opportunity to self-assess they'll find they'll find that it's relatable okay so first 
new faces. We have some wonderful new actors that have joined our cast uh, in the cult that everybody's going to get to. I think what Tyler Perry did very well is piece these character, new characters in to where now the story makes more sense if it didn't make sense before. Because before it was about you get to see the cult and you get to see the FBI who is investigating this cult. Now it's it is still about the FBI investigating, but it's more so about the backstory of the cult. And I think those new characters help help uh, flesh that out. Um, you're also going to see if the Tally Ruth relationship is what it is, which is pretty interesting because the first twelve showed a bond that was it seemed unbreakable. But we're going to find out if that is the case. And then new and old relationships, as far as the, the opposite sex go for all characters violence violence is a part of it so uh, if people were excited as, as i saw on twitter about the wild um ride that we took them on then this this is this is definitely going to be by far the most talked about tyler perry season Ooh. um okay i'm not gonna so yes barry is going to make an appearance in the compound this is this is probably going to be the the best part the crossover of it all is going to probably be the best part uh for oval fans of watching ruthless because it's you know this is ruth's playground you stepped into ruth's world when you step on the rock with your sheet compound and i don't think barry was ready for that well with respect to those topics, I always make sure to do research and like understand how a person, for, for, for Ruth's case, how women can be misled in cults. And all of that is found on YouTube University. I look at a lot of interviews from real women who have been in cults, who have escaped cults, uh, children who talk about their experience. Like there's a lot of interviews and things like that on, online for people to actually empathize versus judge. Because honestly, it happens more often than we like to talk about, where people are getting into these groups thinking that they are bettering themselves, but really they, they could be doing a lot of harm. I think the coronation scene, that was probably the hardest to film, just, just because uh, the research that I had done and understood that, you know, unfortunately, some cult members and real cults did act like that. You know, and I, I think that that was probably the hardest thing for me, even though I knew it wasn't real for me. Uh, it was still just like, wow, this is, this is how far a mind could go when it's, um, when it's uncontrolled. That secret, you know, not really, but I will say, even though our show is so dark, ruthless, the cast, we tried to find as many moments um, to find the light, <laughs> Juliet. Uh, there was a time when Monica and Brandy had the verses while we were filming, and it was at Tyler Perry Studios. We li Let me tell you something, Juliet. I thought I thought that was my birthday gift, but that day also happened to be my birthday. Oh, wow. And the, the funny thing about it was I was there to work. I, was, I wasn't there for a concert, so... As, as soon as the time frame, which was 7 p.m., I believe, that night came and went, I was like, oh, that wasn't, oh, okay.